Have you ever wondered what happens to your social security benefits if you choose to retire early? Well, I'm gonna answer that question today because I am an early retiree that has put money into the federal government's social security program in the United States and I have an expectation that I will receive that benefit when I am 62. How much will it be? Will it be bigger than I expected or smaller than I expected? Will I still be eligible for it? In fact, you know that we live abroad here in Portugal. Will we be able to receive our social security benefits even though we're not living in the United States? So right in front of me is my social security statement. And I'm gonna share with you guys today exactly how much I expect to receive as a monthly benefit from the Social Security Administration when I hit age 62. This is a very interesting and transparent video that I'm gonna share with you guys today because you know that I retired early at age 39. After achieving financial independence with my wife, we had over $2.5 million invested in the stock market and so therefore we hit our fire number and could quit our jobs. And quitting your jobs early means that it is going to affect how much you eventually get from the Social Security Administration. And keep in mind, if you paid into Social Security, you are entitled to that benefit. And that is exactly what Christina and I did. The years of work and labor, we gave the federal government a portion of our check and the agreement is that in exchange for that, we are entitled to receive a monthly benefit at age 62. And if there's anyone that is pursuing financial independence and plans to retire early, you're gonna wanna watch this video so that you understand how that benefit is gonna play out in your financial journey. And so on today's video, I am actually gonna take you guys into my social security benefits statement. I'm gonna share with you guys how much I made every single year up to the point where I retired early. And when I look at this, I am still in awe because on what I think was a very humble salary, I was able to amass a fortune. And a lot of that had to deal with the fact that Christina and I were investing so aggressively. Our savings rate was up to 70% at one point. And as I go through this statement, I'm gonna talk about some things that go beyond just these numbers. The things that you should be doing so that you put yourself in a position where that you aren't necessarily reliant on your social security in order to sustain yourself in retirement. And I'm just gonna say this now. If you take the amount of money that we have invested in the stock market, that amount was around $2.5 million when we retired. And let's say we never invested another dollar into our investment portfolios and we allowed those investments to grow for the next 23 years, the age that we are eligible to receive Social Security. If you calculate a return of about 10%, and we've actually been getting a, a greater return than that since we retired five years ago. If you take it from the point that we retired in 2019 and estimate it out 23 years, you will see that that $2.5 million turns into over $22 million thanks to compound interest and the average return of the stock market. And so those numbers are astronomical and inspiring when we are talking about building wealth by investing in the stock market. You know, we're in a very fortunate situation because we don't have to pull from our stock portfolios because we have other assets that are paying our monthly bills here in Portugal. We have our real estate alone, which covers our monthly expenses. And so that money that we have invested in the stock market, 
there's absolutely no doubt in my mind that that money is gonna reach those levels. But let's get focused. Let's talk about the subject at hand, my social security statement. So if you haven't done this before, it's really easy and straightforward to do. You just go to the sss.gov website. On the website, you will see your social security or it says my social security statement. You can go to that. If you haven't created an account, you can create an account. I already have an account, so I'm just gonna simply sign in and it's gonna ask me for a little bit of information and then it's gonna ask me to input some other things and then voila, here we have it, my social security statement. Now what I like about the Social Security Administration website is that it's actually pretty user friendly. I know that in the past, this website was not very easy to look at, pulling up your statement was kind of a hassle, but they do a really good job of summarizing everything on one screen. One of the things that you will see immediately that pops out on mine is the eligibility and earnings. Now, when you first start paying into Social Security from your paychecks, if you're self-employed, if you're a W-2 employee, if you have a business, whatever the case may be, when you first start paying into that, you start to amass what's called work credits. And in order to actually receive a benefit, you have to meet a certain amount of work credits. And you can see that from my statement that I am eligible already after the years that I put in. I've already received my 40 credits needed to receive the benefit. Now, what's also on this page is I can review my full earnings records. And I'm gonna pull that up now because I want you guys to also have a look at this and see where I started and where I ended up on my journey to financial independence. And so I'm gonna share with you guys from 1995, that's the first year that I registered a payment into Social Security up until 2019, the point where I achieved financial independence and chose to retire early. Now on this screen, you will see the year I worked, the taxed Social Security earnings for that year, and the tax Medicare earnings for that year. And if we start in 1995, you will see that in 1995, I earned $253. In 96, I earned quite a bit more, 4,353. That's income growth right there. But as the years go on, you can see my income slowly but steadily rising. Now, I did a quick calculation of my earnings throughout the years. And basically from 1995 until 2019, my average salary, when you take all those years into account, was a little over $50,000. Now, towards the end of my working career, I was making well, this is interesting. My last year, I made $96,015. You know, I look at all of the years in between that, and I can see that when I first started working for the federal government in 2003, I made about $38,000. And every year, my salary was going up, but then it dipped back down, and it kind of, it kind of jumped around a bit. And it was in 2011 that I started working in the San Francisco Bay Area. And because the San Francisco Bay Area has a high cost of living, you can see that my salary in the San Francisco Bay Area was much higher than, than many of my other years of work. And that time in the Bay from 2011 to about 2015, 2016, you could see that my salary was really high back then. But for San Francisco standards, that amount of money, I mean, it actually really wasn't that high. But it really wasn't about what we were earning. It was about how we were saving and investing that money. And these years, this, this 2010, 2011 years, those were kind of the, the initial start 
of our financial independence journey when we got very intentional about making more, saving more, and investing more money. And we were earning money not just at our, at our jobs, but also through our side hustles, through our real estate transactions. We were doing so many things to be able to invest more money into the stock market to grow that investment portfolio. But you can see that those years in the Bay Area, those were high income years at our at our W-2 job, at my W-2 job. Christina's income was relatively the same. And then you can see when we went to Japan in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, our income uh, fell because when we went to Japan, we took a pay cut. Uh, but there were other benefits that really made that pay cut make a lot of sense. And so I'm only sharing this with you because I think it's so interesting to see how my income grew throughout the years. And this brings up a point that I want to make for a lot of the naysayers out there that say things like, there's no way I can achieve financial independence because I'm not making a lot of money. Well, when I first started my career in 2003, really, I was only making $38,000. By the time I ended my career, I was making close to 100. Now that's not a huge difference, you know, but I worked for the federal government. But the point is that where you start is not where you're gonna end up on this journey. You're gonna find ways to increase your income at work. And for us, more importantly, outside of work. That's where the real wealth was really developed through our side hustles, through our investment in real estate and through our returns in the stock market. So just, just keep that in mind. Even though you might not be making a lot of money at your nine to five, you can, you will make more money once you get intentional about this journey. So that's a review of my earnings. Now, if we scroll down to the plan for retirement, this is a very interesting part of your social security benefit. It's so important that you understand this, especially if you're talking about retiring early. When your social security benefits are calculated, they base it on your highest 35 years of earnings. This is a very important point. They base it on your highest 35 years of earnings. Now, since I retired early, and if there are other people that are out there that are gonna be retiring early, they must understand that if you do not work 35 years, what they're going to do is they are going to have to put in zero earnings in your calculations for the years that you did not work up to 35 years. And that is going to definitely impact the amount of money you get. Because on these social security statements, there is an assumption that you will continue to make money at the amount of money that you made the previous year. So for example, if you made $100,000 one year, your social security statement is going to anticipate in your projected benefit that you will continue to make $100,000 a year until you are eligible to receive your social security benefit at let's say age 62. And it's gonna use that money to increase your social security benefit up to a certain amount. There is a maximum amount of money that social security will pay someone regardless of how much money they make. But nevertheless, the assumptions with these social security statements is that when they are calculating your benefit, they are assuming that you are going to work all the way until you are eligible for the benefit. Now, if you are early retiree, that is not going to be the case. You may quit decades before you are actually eligible to receive social security. And if that is the case, that means that assumption that you will continue to contribute money into the social security system doesn't apply to you. And this means that your benefit will be based on the years that you worked and the remaining years will be counted as zeros. And so what's really cool on the social security website is that you can put that into their retirement planning calculator. And I'm going to show you guys that here. So you can see here the average future annual salary. Let's say you change that to zero. You anticipate that you aren't going to make a single dollar. And because of that, you are not going to make any more contributions to Social Security or Medicare. 
based off of that, you can see that in my example, that by the time I'm age 62, I will receive $1,985 if I take it at 62. Now keep in mind, all of these numbers are adjusted for inflation. If I wait till I'm 67, I will get $2,819. And if I delay it to age 70, I will receive $3,400. This is really important to do, especially when you're running your calculations and determining how Social Security is going to play into your financial independence plan. I will tell you that for us, this income is not something that we are relying on when we reach those ages. This will be income that because we have paid into it, we will collect it. What we do with that money, we still don't know yet. The other aspect of your Social Security statement that you should look at is the more benefits section. And in this section, you can see things like whether or not you qualify for Medicare, what your family is entitled to as far as a survivor benefit, what you are entitled to as far as a disability payment. You can see lots of other things in this area that are some of the additional benefits that's provided as a part of Social Security and the fact that you paid into it. One of the caveats that the Social Security Administration puts on these statements. And I think this is so interesting. They will say something like, important things to know about your Social Security benefits. Read this. Because a point that it makes is that Social Security is not meant to be your sole income in retirement. It's supposed to supplement other sources of income. And unfortunately, in the US, a lot of people rely solely on Social Security. And they found that it is not something that really allows them to live a, a comfortable life at all. In fact, people are struggling when they just live solely off of Social Security. Now, I bring this up and I emphasize folks in the US because there are people that are living in other parts of the world solely off of their social security and they are living very fruitful and comfortable lives in retirement. And that's one thing that I have seen here in Portugal. I saw it when I was in Thailand, I saw it in Japan. You know, I saw, I've seen it throughout the world. People that are receiving a social security benefit from the US and they are spending that money in other countries in their retirement and they are living a very good life. So one thing to keep in mind is that you are eligible to receive your social security benefits practically anywhere you're at in the world. If you have access to a banking system, if you have access to wire transfers, you have access to that money. Um, and what a lot of people will do is they will have their social security benefits deposited into their U.S. bank accounts. Then they would just make a transfer from their U.S. bank accounts to whatever country that they are in. So that's something to keep in mind. That's a question that always comes up. If I move abroad, will I still be able to receive my social security benefits? Yes, if you are eligible for social security, you paid into the system, you are eligible for it. There's also one aspect that kind of made me giggle when I, when I looked at this statement. There's a line here from the Social Security Administration that says, with you throughout life's journeys. I just thought that was funny because we talk about uh, our rich journey and Social Security benefit. They, they along for the ride too. They, they want to contribute to your journey. And, you know, I know there's a lot of talk about uh, the Social Security benefits not being around in the future, you know. That, that's a whole video within itself, whether or not it's even going to be here. Now, I want to go back to the point that I made earlier about Social Security not being a pivotal part of our financial independence plan. And it's because for us, we really wanted to have financial freedom that we were in control of. You know, there's a lot of talk of Social Security just going away, just disappearing. The funds running dry. Now, I don't think that will happen, but if it did, 
we would not be reliant on it for us to be able to stay retired and live a comfortable life. And so I encourage you guys to pull up your social security statement, to understand where you stand in this regard, but to go above and beyond that as a source of income. Do not rely completely on this. You must be building wealth outside of this that you can live off of. So that is through real estate, through the stock market, through a business of some sort that will go on and continue to pay you money when you don't have to work at that business. And so I hope this video has given you food for thought. And as usual, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel and join the journey.